Welcome to the Life According to Uncle Tuck, a production of Borden DE and Lindsay Epps Media LLC. What's going on, everybody? It's your uncle's favorite uncle. Hey, Uncle Tuck. The other day, I was talking to a homie of mine. He's been in a long-term relationship, and he thinks it's coming towards the end. So I asked him what's going on. He's like, well, you know, I've been busting my ass, you know, to provide the kind of home that she wants, the kind of luxury she wants and everything. And it seems like no matter what he does, it's not enough. She constantly nitpicks at everything he does. So I, I, I had to be honest with him. I was like, look, man, from the outside looking in, and I know you, you brought this woman in a world that you knew you couldn't maintain. You brought her in a world and had her believe that the lifestyle or the level you were at was always going to be maintained that way. So you can't really fault her for her now seeing that in order for you to maintain that lifestyle that you started off with, you got damn near work and kill yourself. Three jobs, uh, side hustles, everything out the books. I said, had you been honest with her in the beginning and allowed her to make a decision whether or not that's what she wanted to roll with or not, you wouldn't be in this problem. I don't have a problem when I hear women talk about, I don't want to be 50-50. It's to each his own. If you get with a woman that says, look, I ain't trying to be 50-50. You know, I'm, I, I want you to be traditional. You know, man takes care of all the bills, this and this, and my money's my money. Some guys, they got it like that, or some guys are more than willing to accept her like that. You can't really fault them for wanting that, you know, because there's people out here that's going to give it to them. Now, on the other hand, if the guy is traditional and he's kicking out and he's paying for everything and he's taking care of everything on his son, you are out of your mind if you think you're not going to be traditional with him. Like, if that cat comes home and be like, make me a sandwich, it's no, oh, um, I just got my nails done, or... I'm on my way to the hairdresser. Nah, you stop what the fuck you doing. Make that sandwich. A lot of women, they not really trying to do that. They they get caught up in watching these reality shows and these Instagram stories and stuff like that and think the guy's supposed to pay for everything and you can do what the fuck you want, when you want, and how you want. Nah. Guys that got it like that have way too many options and they don't want to come home to anything that's going to create stress. The stress is on the outside of that door. It's not on the inside of that home. And until they figure out that, it's always going to be problems. Now, I came across a couple YouTube channels where they talked about, you know, a lot of women that want the 1% man. They don't understand that the 1% man has choices and he has options out the wazoo. A lot of times I agree with them. They, they are right. Like, if you out busting your ass and you're making six, seven figures... You don't want to come home to anybody that's going to make you work to understand them or struggle to understand them. Nah, you, you want to come home. You left all the bullshit on the other side of the door. I'm not coming home to no bullshit. And especially, I find the ones that's really funny are the ones that have kids. Now, there's nothing wrong if you, you had kids and you wasn't married or you were married, you had kids and got divorced or whatever. Fine. But when you're looking for that man, that 1% to cover everything, and especially if you had a place in your life where you don't want to have any kids, you you might want to tone things down a little bit because a lot of them guys, it's all, they're all about legacy. And your kids is not his legacy. The kids you bear for him will be a legacy. That's if he chooses to get with you and you already have kids. And a lot of women... They really not trying to see that. It's it's crazy. It's like I, I hear so many women out here that got standards, but don't want to be held to any. How you gonna have all these standards for men, but a man can't hold you to a standard? If a man holds you to a standard, he's uh, being misogynistic or he's being disrespectful or anything like that. Nah, a man can have options. It's like, you know, I'm a big guy, and I remember dating. Back in my 20s and 30s, you know, I was always a solid guy and, and big, you know. So it was certain women that that, that just they didn't, they didn't want big guys. And that's cool. I didn't try to, you know, negotiate with them. I didn't try to, 
you know, fight tooth and nail or convince them that, you know, they were fat shaming or whatever, something like that. Nah. I just kept it moving. It was like, all right, well, you know what? You have a nice day. And I went about my business because there are women that they were cool with my size. Just like when we, as men, when we say certain things we don't want in a woman, let's look down on you look down on us like we not allowed to have standards and options but you can have all the standards and options in the world for the life of me I don't get that part but getting back to my homie you know I told him I said well you brought her in this lifestyle and if you can't maintain this lifestyle you need to let her know and the thing is is that she she's a good looking woman you know, you know she definitely fits that Instagram model ish type style it's killing them and there are, there is also a age difference between them i think it's like 10 or 15 years or something like that i can't i can't really remember just knowing that he's willing to work himself in the grave for the love of this woman and i honestly like i said i'm from the outside looking in it don't look like she loved him like he loves her he posts her on social media and I have to say, every time I see a picture of them on social media, I kind of cringe a little bit because her body language does not look like that of somebody that's in love with a person they're in a picture with. It really doesn't. It looks like some old, like, he's a fan and she's like, well, let me pose for this picture for my fan. And, you know, the fan got a little too close and she's like, oh, you know, he doesn't see that. At first, I thought maybe because I'm his friend. You know, I was looking too much into it. So what I did, I took a couple of the pictures and I showed it to some of my crew that don't know him. And I was like, what do you think of this picture? And they were like, what are you talking about? I said, do these, do these people look like a couple? Nine out of ten times, the homies was like, nah, I just look like he tried to hug up on some girl at some event or something like that. You know, he even took her out and spent on her or took her on a vacation. And she's like, well, let me pose for one picture. Like... They say he looks more like a sugar daddy for her than anything else. Now, granted, these is brothers that don't know this cat, don't know this female. They just looking at pictures. So if they're seeing that, and the whole world got to be seeing it, and he just don't want to, you know, don't want to see it. So I hate to say it, I gotta let him, you know, fall subject to his own vices. I would never tell a person to leave based off my opinion. One thing I did share with him is that. You know the real story. You know the you know the true story of your relationship. How you want to deal with it, that's on you. I do say that I I don't look at her any different way because I know he brought her into that world that she think that was going to be the level they were going to be on and only grow higher. You know, not be on that level and it dip down, then it dip back up based on you know how he get his hustle on. And the funny thing about it is, is I told him, I think if you were to break up with her, deal with the hurt, you know, because it's going to be some hurt because you got some time invested. You deal with the hurt. You get it out your system. The, the way you like to hustle, you can get that lifestyle for yourself or, or put yourself in a better position where you're not hustling, you know, check to check. You know, he I think he would do very, very well if he was by himself. Because the thing is, is that I think she does like cosmetology or what's the stuff with the eyelashes or the skincare or something. I, I, I don't know exactly what she does, but I know she makes a grip and she doesn't help him out with none of the finances. Like all the bills is his responsibility. Even her car note and car insurance is his responsibility. Her money and she'll tell him straight up, I'm just saving my money. And that right there just had me like, damn, now. Like, like I was saying in the beginning about the 50-50, I get it if a female don't want to go 50-50 and they want traditional, but they got to understand, you know, with that, you're going to have to do traditional things, you know. And depending on the man, you know, he may want you just to be Susie Homemaker. You know, who knows? It, it, it varies. The thing is, is that the way I always looked at it is that, look, if I'm making... 80,000, 90,000 a year. And my lady is making 
let's say fifty, sixty thousand. So let's let's say I make eighty thousand, she makes sixty thousand. To me, that's one hundred forty thousand dollars. We can elevate our lifestyle totally different if we work as a team. I mean, we're we're a couple. We supposed to be a team. You know why not work? I mean, I wish some of these ladies would look at it like that. That if he's got this amount of money and you got this amount of money and y'all serious about one another and you come together, y'all could definitely have a better lifestyle for you, the kids, everybody. But if you're just depending on him and you're going to do whatever you want with your money, that's going to create stress. I saw on this video, this guy, I can't remember his name, it slips me for now, but he was like, look, if I'm maintaining when you came in my world and you were maintaining we can elevate the level of how we were maintaining if we come together and truly come together. People come into relationships and, and still be on some single shit like, now. Nah, you a team. And it's for the betterment of the team, you know? But a lot of people don't want to be a team. They want to be popular. Like, like I said, I see my boy going down a downhill spiral. Like I said, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not really cool with his lady, you know, I met her a couple times, you know, we went to a couple functions together, but her whole body language reeks like, you know, she's really not trying to be a part of that situationship, relationship, or whatever it is they got going on. She's really not at all. So, yeah, I don't know how he's going to handle it. I just, you know, as his friend, I offered my advice, whether he takes it or not, I don't know really he, he put himself in that and you really shouldn't be trying to break the bank to make somebody happy especially if she has the means to contribute to the lifestyle that she think y'all should live another thing i think part of the reason she doesn't want to break up with him is because i guess she sees the potential and if she breaks up with him she's fearful that the next female that he gets will get the reward that she thinks she's deserving of. So I think she's just holding out. So she's either going to hold out until she gets that reward or he kills herself working. Who knows? As far as that 50-50 household, it, it, it really depends. This really depends on the people. Like some guys would be like, nah, I don't want my wife or my lady handling shit. I got this. Other guys is like, look, you know, I'm not saying you got to cover everything, but if you're going to be here, you're going to help out. You know, we can do more together than individually. And like I said, really based on the couple. Like, I guess because of social media nowadays, we see more of the negative. You know, we see more of that narrative where, you know, the guy's supposed to do all this, this, and this. And if he's not, he's not considered a man. The thing I find interesting about that is that when you look at a lot of these ladies that are saying this, half of them ain't got shit. Like, you know, they they ain't got shit. They ain't got shit to offer other than what they sitting on. And new pussies come out every day. So what makes yours that special, especially if you're not contributing to his, his mental health, his peace, his calm. I just find it weird that so many women are comfortable asking for shit that they're not even capable of doing on their own. And, and let me let me not get started on the ones that holler, you know, I'm independent, I'm independent. But you on Section 8. That's not independent. The government, you dependent on the government. No, the government takes care of you. You ain't taking care of shit. You just on cruise control. But that's a whole discussion for another episode on the podcast. I'm just curious what you guys think and everything. You know, definitely leave me some comments. I, I like to know your thoughts on it. So if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when I put a new podcast up. This podcast will be available on YouTube as well as all major streaming services. So until next time, this is your uncle's favorite uncle. Hey, Uncle Tuck. Peace.